Hello, great to have this chance to just unpack the Bible a little bit together. So over these next few weeks, so there's going to be three weeks in kind of this little mini series of some Bible study notes, just as we start to look towards Easter um, and all that that means. So we are going to be spending three weeks looking at the life, the death and the resurrection of Jesus. So this week we're going to pick up the idea of Jesus's life being about service. Next week, looking at the idea of Jesus's death being that sacrifice, that incredible sacrifice for us. And then in that final third week, um, as we kind of get into Easter week, uh, we'll be looking at Jesus's resurrection to save and redeem us. So we're going to look at Jesus being a great example of being a servant, Jesus's death of that sacrifice for us, and then his resurrection, meaning we are saved and redeemed. So I'm really excited as we get into these three weeks and just spend a bit of time um, looking at some verses in the Old Testament and the New Testament each week uh, that will help us on this. So the verses for this week, it's Psalm 8, and Hebrews 2 verses 6 to 11. So Psalm 8, an incredible account of the psalm is kind of looking at God's creation, the purpose of the world, the purpose of us as humans, why God created us, why God created it all. And the psalmist uses this amazing word of referring to God as being majestic. What a great word. Something perhaps we don't really have in our everyday language, isn't it? That word majestic. What does it mean? It means beautiful, impressive, dignified. And God's creation is majestic and reflects the fact that God is majestic. I don't know about you, but I really love this time of year as we're seeing flowers coming out, the sun's out a little bit more, dare we say, um, a little bit warmer, but we're seeing life springing up, aren't we? Whether it's flowers, um, whether it's trees turning green again, whether it's lambs in the field, we're seeing an incredible time of kind of the world coming out of hibernation. It really is majestic, it's beautiful, it's impressive as we look at it. And I just think it's incredible when we look at the intricacies of creation, isn't it? Just the little things that make things work. And if ever you watch those kind of nature programs that unpack how things happen and how things work, it's just amazing that individuality of creation. And when we look at humans, we're the same. We're all so in, when I say we're the same, it's the same in that sense that we're all individual, we're all unique. And yet in this incredible psalm, Psalm 8, we read that there is something that we all share. Whatever we're like, whatever our personality is, whatever the unique factors in each of us are, we still share something. And that is that God is there for us. God is cares for us. God put all the things of the earth under us for us to care and rule over. Let's just have a little read of some of the verses in Psalm 8, starting from verse 3. <clears throat> when I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you've set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them? Human beings that you care for them. You've made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honour. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Just some great verses there and I kind of missed a little bit out at the end there but just some great verses there that if you flip to the Hebrews verses that I said Hebrews 2 6 to 11 the writer of Hebrews picks this up but before we go any further I don't know about your Bible but my Bible has lots of little notes at the bottom love it because it just gives us a further understanding it develops things a bit further for us and what it says in those verses that I've just read in my Bible is that, yes, it could mean they, it could mean mankind, it could mean us. But it also could mean him, could mean God, could mean Jesus. 
And when we look at those two differences of, of what these verses are saying, it means, yes, God has created us, as it says there, that for him to care for us. Yes, God has created us above things of the world so that we can work, so that we can work the land, so that we can manage things of this world. He's put them under our feet. And then we flip it to this other meaning of instead of us, is it actually talking about God? Is it talking about Jesus? That God sent Jesus to care for us, that God sent Jesus to crown him with glory and honour, that God sent Jesus to rule over us in terms of directing us, in terms of being our king, in terms of being our Lord and helping us in terms of managing the things of this world. And you could have a whole big debate on the discrepancy of this and why isn't the Bible clear? And it could be down to translators and, and not perhaps fully getting or picking out the right nuances of, of the original language. And there could be so many different things we could spend our time on. Well, why is it like that? But for me, what I've really taken on reading that and then reading those notes that say that is this psalm can be read in both ways. It can be read in both ways. That means, yes, Jesus came. Jesus came to care for us, to serve us, to show us how to live in this world, how to live on this earth, how to love others, how to love the creation, this incredible, majestic creation that God has given us. But it also means we have a responsibility in this as well. Yes, Jesus has come and shown us the way. And that, that was after the psalmist wrote this, which might be where this difference in language comes, because the psalmist was writing this before Jesus had come. So he's looking at it from the angle of himself, of humans, of us, of people. And actually, there's a responsibility there for us of seeing how Jesus came to serve, to care, not just for us, but to care for this world. And to take on that responsibility, as he showed us, to look after the things of this world, to care for other people, to be rulers in this world in terms of pointing the way to Jesus. I just think it's really incredible when we look at this psalm in those two ways and we can really reflect on this idea that Jesus came to serve. He came to care for us. He was mindful of mankind. He was mindful of the creative works of God that came before he was here on earth with us. And when Jesus came to serve, he came to show us a way of living. He came to show us what it means to care and love for other people. He came to show us what it means to not just live for ourselves, but to serve others and to hopefully just take that on board to live as he did. I remember as a young person, um, there was a big thing that went around of this, what would Jesus do? And there was armbands, little rubber armbands that we all had that said WWJD on them. And the idea was that you wore it as a constant reminder of what would Jesus do in this circumstance, in this situation. If he was me, what would Jesus do? And it encouraged me as a young person to really live in that mindset of I'm not just living for myself. I'm living how God wants me to. And a big part of that is service, is loving others, is not just living for myself, but putting others above myself. God's creation, so precious and majestic and beautiful. He's calling us to be mindful of it. And yes, that includes nature, but a massive part of it is other humans, is other people and living out that life of service like Jesus showed us on his 30 years before, or 33 years, isn't it, before he went to the cross. And as I've already said, if we move, and I'm just going to skip in my Bible, over to Hebrews 2, the writer of Hebrews quotes those verses from Psalm 8 and uses it to explain why Jesus came, why Jesus was made human, what it means for us to accept who Jesus was and why he came 
we may not see or know or understand everything that's going on right now and certainly not everything that is to come or that's going to happen but we can see and know Jesus Jesus who came to be a servant for every single one of us so that we might experience that glory that the psalmist talks about and then in Hebrews it's picked up again that we might be brought to that same place of glory wow that's incredible isn't it next week we're going to pick that up a little bit more and, and talk about the sacrifice Jesus made and what that means um, that kind of these verses in Hebrews also start to touch on the sacrifice Jesus made but he came first of all to serve knowing that he needed to show us the way, show us how to do it, to serve us so that we in turn would live our lives that way. And then comes salvation and then comes bringing us into that place of glory, into that place of holiness so that we are part of his family. Some incredible bits in those Hebrews verses. Please delve into that and, and chat with someone else about it. It's just incredible. Part of the series we're doing on Sundays at the moment, again in this run up to Easter, is looking at God's amazing grace and what that means for us. And in verse nine of this chapter in Hebrews, it tells us that God's grace came through Jesus tasting death. Quite a, an evocative image that, isn't it? Jesus tasted death so we wouldn't have to. Jesus came to serve, to show the way to make a way so that we could be in his family so we could experience this amazing grace the purpose of Jesus's life here on earth for those 30 plus years was to serve was to help was to care was then to go on and be that sacrifice after a life of service so that we could then be saved by his grace there's an incredible song that, that always comes back to mind, especially at this time of year that you might, some of you might know of, might remember, called The Servant King by Graham Kendrick. And I think there's some verses and words in that that really help us with this idea of Jesus being the servant king. And I'll just read a few of them now, just if maybe close your eyes or just think on them, or if you know the song, they might come to mind for you as well. But these are the words of this song. From heaven you came, helpless babe. Entered our world, your glory veiled. Not to be served, but to serve. And give your life that we might live. This is our God, the servant king. He calls us now to follow him, to bring our lives as a daily offering of worship to the servant king. Wow, that's a great call for all of us, isn't it? A challenging call for all of us to see that Jesus came not to be served, but to serve. And our response is to follow him daily, to bring our lives daily as worship and as service to him and then in service to those around us. That's our response. So our lives might show his service, might bring glory to him. So final bit of perhaps challenge or thought, if you've got time over these next few weeks, maybe spend some time worshipping our majestic God, worshipping our servant king. And ask him how you can be living your life as a daily offering for the plans and the purposes he has for you and in service as we seek to live our lives as he showed us. I hope that's an encouragement to you. Let's keep digging in. Let's keep seeing where God's at work and following all he has for us. God bless and see you really soon. <laughs>